Hey guys, welcome to Strong with Raj. No nonsense strength training. In this video, I'm particularly going to talk about my newly created, not invented, as I don't like to reinvent the wheel, my newly created workout circuit, I should say. I'm struggling to find the right nouns for it, but that will not matter once I start explaining you what it is. And I simply call it back to back lifting. So uh, as the name says, you have to do lifts back to back. And in a video not long ago, I have explained this in a little bit, but I've got a lot of time in this video and I thought I'll just pour it all out, elaborate to you what this is, as I've been doing it for a few weeks now. And it is becoming quite concrete in my workouts. In, uh, in this process, I will tell you a little bit about myself. I suppose you should know a little bit more about myself as uh, my beginnings and my journey into the, the point at which I am. Talking of journey, I, I hope you have seen my road to 200 kg squat journey. And I recently achieved that 200 kg squat is done although it's just one rep anyway i will leave the link up there for you to check it out so let's go back into the back to back lifting <clears throat> so what you do is you have to do two lifts two barbell lifts no no not you have to sorry i will keep it to myself so i do two lifts back to back and of course one of them almost always has been the barbell squat and i have made sure that it is not a complex something that is done in olympic weightlifting and which also became popular thanks to crossfit where you do uh, two or three or four movements with a barbell such as let's say you do clean from the floor then you do, let's say, three front squats with the same weight, same bar. And then you do, let's say, two push press. Then athletically, you let the bar down on your back and maybe, let's say, you do three squats. It is highly skilled. You have to be quite athletic. And at the same time, it could be a little bit risky. I've done it a few times in the days when I did CrossFit. And I'm going to take you down that lane in the story of my journey so yeah uh, the what i liked about it is that there is a sort of commitment to have the bar with you in your hand all the time mine is different mine is not so rushed it also is not a circuit training but i'm happy to call it a circuit that's the least of the uh, least of the offensive names that I can give it to it without calling it a, a kind of reinventing of the wheels. And then there's also another name which is from bodybuilding area called superset, but I won't call it that. Anyway, <clears throat> so it's happened to me for what reason? Let me explain you that. I have mostly been doing <clears throat> uh, squats and deadlifts, press and bench press. And in most parts, I like to do them heavy. By that, I mean they are near to my 70 to 80% of 1RM, which is now, as you know, is 200 kg. And uh, doing sets of five, mostly, or four, or three. Once you do that set, you sit down and wait for five, six, seven minutes. That was something new that I had learned by doing strength training alone and almost exclusively from starting strength a very big change from uh, doing lots of different workouts without any rest but very light so anyway i have recently been by that i mean six to eight weeks been doing medium to lightweight now i won't go into the uh, how heavy medium and light means and i'm not tired enough and i just can't see a point for sitting for too long in between my sets by doing less lighter weight, as it is obvious, I'm trying to do higher volume. 
So it so happened that I had done my three sets of five already of 150 kgs, I think. And I was supposed to do overhead press after that. I did overhead press 60 kgs, maybe three sets of 10. And I looked back for some reason, I was using a, a separate rack for my overhead press in this gym, which is almost always quiet and I love it. So my bar, my barbell loaded, which I did squats was still sitting there. And I said, how good is this? I'm so blessed that I can have so much space and time and so many racks that I can actually load barbells ready to go. And that's when I did a back to back. I'm pretty sure I did 140 kg squats. And mind you, that is after already had done 140 kg squats, three sets of five, roughly. I can't remember clearly. And I then rushed back to my barbell where I was doing overhead press and I did 10 reps of 60 kg. So medium to light squats and then sort of heavy-ish press. So that's what back-to-back -back is. Back-to-back -back means that you are doing barbell lifting, although there's an exception, I'll come back to that. And uh, one of them is medium to light and one of them is light, whatever that works for you. But there is no break in between and you are making sure that you have done three to four sets of your work sets already. Yes, it is not that you will do fresh. So I was semi-tired. I had done three sets of five 140 kg squats. And then I did two or three sets from memory, I think, of uh, overhead press. Then I proceeded from my back to back. As I'm doing here, I'm just going to get warmed up for some overhead press. So back to back, there is a few changes that you can bring. And I have even, you know, in my own mind, it's amazing how much I think about uh, anything that I have, that I'm developing. I think so much in detail. It's almost uh, obsessive, <laughs> compulsive. So when you write B to B, if both Bs are in capital, which means both exercises are, or sorry, both lifts are barbell. The first B almost always have to be capital, which means first exercise you do is barbell. If the second B is lowercase, which means small letter, then it means it is a dumbbell exercise, which you will see in this video. That is the only exception. Otherwise, it is only two lifts, not three, not four, not five, not six and not uh, in numerous reps. So let me tell you a story about myself. About 10, 12, 15 years ago, I was much younger. I was a newly fresh, freshly minted, fully enthusiastic personal trainer. And I thought I'll change the world. I used to be very fit in terms of cardio, not so strong. And uh, I was working in a community gym where there wasn't much scope to do. But I did my best. And by that, I mean, I really kept fit. And I used to run group classes. And this is where the fancy just knows no limits, which is a dangerous thing. I would create programs. I would create workouts and give them really fancy, very fitness-oriented, uh, global gym type of names. But I must say that I soon realized that everybody is doing it already. They are publishing their workouts online, and they call it things like Booty Blitz, Bicep Unleashed, names like that. And I came up with some pretty interesting names myself, but I soon realized they weren't. I did, however, came up with one which I thought was quite novel on its own. And that was Cougar Training. Yes, Cougar Training. Not, not at all the Cougar that you know from the popular Hollywood culture. Not about that extremely rich and old woman who goes for dating with a young man. No. 
Cougar is a spirit of this animal who attacks relentlessly and is extremely fast. So the circuit was that you you have 10 to 15 meters of distance and you're running at something really, really fast. For example, a sandbag, you grab it like you're a cougar and you smash it three times on the floor and you turn around and you run as though you're running with the prey, down it goes. Then you go into a bit of recovery and somebody else does the same thing. Anyway, so this went on and I created many such programs. And around those times, I did quite a bit of circuit training, about which I learned the theory from my course as to what circuit training is. Mainly it is four to five to six, maybe seven stations where you go to each station and do a certain number of reps like 10, for example. Why wouldn't you do 10? Because every, everybody else does the 10. So I did that kind of stuff as well. And I'm trying to differentiate how this is what I'm doing here. B2B could be inspired, but it is not at all circuit training. It is definitely not a complex from CrossFit. But around the same time, CrossFit was just coming into its its um, infancy kind of a life. And it became very popular very soon. I joined one CrossFit gym. I was uh, not 100% that it was the best thing to do, but I did it because I was a personal trainer. I had to learn what this thing was and why it was becoming so popular. And I'll connect that to my back-to-back -back theory soon. So I go to CrossFit and there are things happening which are just out of control. There is this workout where you do deadlift and then you do some handstand push-ups. I was a very fresh, very inexperienced personal trainer, but I knew this was silly. It was silly to do so many deadlifts and then come back and then go upside down and do some handstand push-ups. I couldn't see the logic, the link. Fill the 50, a workout in CrossFit. Why? Why 50? Why? Why are we doing 50 box jumps? No, just because it's called, that's the name. Where's the link? Where's the logic? No. So when I present, when I thought of my back-to-back, -back, I need, needed to have a logic. And the logic is simple. The logic is that you are trying to increase your working capacity and not be a, you know, a little round, a little fat type of a lifter who just does very heavy and sits down and then he lacks in a little of cardio, which I, I am lacking. To get that little challenging and to also make sure that you know sometimes when you don't have time, you just combine two lifts and do them back to back, but not to the point where you start falling on the floor on your back where your guts are out and you are just proud and you call it a workout. No, not because it is filthy 50, not because you have to have a fancy name. It has to have some sanity, some logic. So with that in mind, I thought I had the right reasons and kind of a framework to do something back to back. Mind you, the kind of freedom that we have in many things that we do is amazing. And that freedom brings us with creativity. But in most cases, it can create a lot of rubbish. I'm not having a go at, at CrossFit here. I will, I will take you back even further when I was a very, very young man. I had nothing to do with gym and exercises. And something similar did happen. But not in terms of exercise or programming. Way back when I was really young, I worked in hospitality in a bar and restaurant. And in the bar, I learned how to make cocktails. And we were trained properly and logically about what is a cocktail and what happens and other things. But there were times when there were guys in the bar who will mix whatever with whatever. It didn't matter. Like they will mix five spirits and wine and a soft drink. Same thing, same principle is happening around in the gym scenarios where just for the sake of creating programs, trainers and coaches are doing this. And I think CrossFit is one such example where 
the programming, the combination of exercise, the combination of the lifts does not make any sense. That makes others think that being a trainer, being a coach, being a PT is just is just nothing. You just get someone as a client and you smash them and that's your job. It isn't. It isn't. There's a logic and science to some degree required when you are making some workout or a training program. And that is what I learned thanks to starting strength Mark Ripito explains you got to do five reps. He tells you to do five reps and explains why five. I would like someone to explain me in CrossFit why 21, then I think it's fifth, uh, 14 and then nine, like in decreasing order to exercise, which are not related at all to some degree. Why? So here I am, I've just finished my squats and I can do a light dumbbell press. Uh, I wasn't very happy looking back at it now. I would rather just stick to barbell, but it cannot have anything else. It can't have kettlebell. It has to have barbell first and then dumbbell. Anyway, so yeah, back to back will feature more often in my videos. And uh, I will think more in terms of what the combination, what combinations are the best. I think um, it will be safe, although it sounds deadly to have squat and deadlift or deadlift. No, I don't think so. Deadlift and squat. Squat. Okay, let's talk about the combinations. Squats and overhead press is one of the very good combination to have. I can switch them around. I can have squats first and then do overhead press or overhead press and then squats. However, I did press first and then squats, the first one, and it felt very good, very natural. Uh, squat and bench press is another one that I will do. I don't think so. I will do bench press and then squat. But then again, for bench press, you need a bench, a bar ready to go and other things. <clears throat> press and deadlift, that can, can be a good one. Um, for example, I can just have a fair amount of weight on deadlift, do three reps, and then right next to it or in front of it could be the bar, which I can clean and press. So my 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 mind, as much as it can run wild, I'm allowing it not to. And if it happens, um, it'll happen more in my videos where I will go wild and try something and I'll record it and I'll bring it to you guys. But yeah, that's your back to back lifting. And uh, I will continue to bring you more. And uh, please like, subscribe. I have, uh, I've had, I've, I have around four, 14,770 something. I need more subscribers, please. And uh, I am uh, continuing to, I'm going to continue to be on my road to two. 100 kg squats i've done it but i want to just keep adding more reps um, but i'm not in rush that's for sure i'll leave the link up there for you guys to watch and thank you for watching and uh, i will see you next time thank you